Hello, and welcome to the Alternate History class. My name's Andrew, and here we explore alternate history through the lens of a history class from another timeline. Last week, we looked at how Napoleon won Waterloo, and how that had ripple effects for the next several years. This week, we will look at the reign of Napoleon II. Today we will cover the short reign of Napoleon II. Uh, now the young man would take the throne upon his father's death, as we mentioned last week. He was only 12 at the time, so his mother would serve as his regent for the first six years of his reign, uh, before she would officially step down as regent. During the, this time, uh, the Empire of France would have strong ties with Austria due to the mother being the daughter of the Emperor of Austria. Now, even after she stepped down, uh, she would still have a strong influence over uh, her, her son, as mothers often do. This would uh, be seen uh, on a policy standpoint, perhaps most stunningly in the uh, independence of Belgium. Uh, Belgium was granted full uh, autonomy and independence on November 22nd of 1828 when the French and British came to a deal to both back the same candidate for the throne, uh, a, a young man named Leopold, known in Belgium as Leopold I, would take the throne uh, and the British uh, would back him due to him having no ties uh, to France despite his uh, father serving as a noble uh, before uh, the revolution in France and uh, it would be uh, Empress Mother Marie Louise's influence uh, that would have the young Napoleon uh, also accept Leopold. Uh, many speculate that if it hadn't been Leopold, perhaps another member of the House of Bonaparte would have been selected to rule over Belgium, really striking it as not truly independent. Uh, but that likely would not have flown with the British. Now, uh, the Empress Mother would still have uh, influence uh, until 1829, uh, but one of the last things that would be a mark that she would have would be the arrangement of her son's marriage. Now, this marriage uh, would be to a woman of great French nobility, uh, as there were concerns in France about the young emperor and the influence that his mother had over him, uh, and try to try and quell these concerns. Uh, the marriage uh, in 1828 would be arranged between uh, Napoleon II and Luis of Orléans uh, of the Bourbon Orléans house. Now this came as uh, quite the shock to many in the Bourbon 
house. Uh, I should say Bourbon Dynasty. As uh, it was viewed as the Bourbons were the arch rivals of the Bonapartes. They did not have friendly relations, especially since Napoleon had come back and ended that brief uh, restoration of the Bourbon monarchy. This would lead to the isolation of the House of Bourbon Orléans uh, from the rest of the dynasty. Uh, and it would pacify conservatives. The marriage would uh, go through officially in 1830. However, at that time, the Empress Mother uh, would no longer have uh, influence over her son as he uh, learned uh, upon the death of his stepfather, uh, Adam Albert von Neitberg, that during uh, Napoleon the first exile uh, in return his mother had been having an affair uh, with his stepfather before uh, the death of his father obviously in their marriage uh, and th that affair had resulted uh, in the birth of two children uh, this struck uh, the young Napoleon as a great betrayal uh, and he often would mourn that uh, his mother uh, had committed the ultimate treachery upon his father and wished that, uh, who many view and still view today as the likely true love of Napoleon, that if Josephine had been his mother, things may have turned out differently uh, for the emperor. Uh, we will obviously never know how that would play out. But the marriage did go through uh, in 1830. Uh, now, but in shortly thereafter, the young Napoleon uh, would lead his first army and what would sadly for him be his last uh, in the first Italian war. Uh, the French would be backing uh, Piedmont, uh, which were now known as Sardinia Piedmont, to take the territories of Modena and De Lucia. Now, uh, the brief breakup of the Kingdom of Sardinia and uh, the Duchy of Piedmont or the Duchy of Savoy uh, was ended uh, when the King of Sardinia, King Charles Felix, uh, would die without an heir. And the kingdom uh, would unite under Duke Charles Albert of Piedmont or Savoy. Uh, and during this war, uh, the young Napoleon II would start to show a talent, uh, much like that of his father, uh, for his military uh, skill. And this would help lead to a, a, a bonding, a friendship to form between the two rulers as, uh, as King Charles Albert would admire the strength and courage of the young emperor. And this close friendship would also uh, be drawn as uh, the young man would see the king of Sardinia as his, as a mentor in many ways. He would view him 
in a fatherly way as uh, he had lost his own father at a young age. Uh, and Charles L. Burr would turn that looking at him as, in many ways as a, not just a friend, but as a son. Uh, and he would give him the name, look name, the Grand, uh, which is French for the eaglet. Now, this is a reference to the uh, dynasty crest uh, and the imperial crest uh, of France have a, a, a eagle on there and his youth and courage, uh, but particularly his youth, uh, would have him say that, would have the king say that the young emperor was just an eagle at learning to fly in this war and great things were on the horizon for him. Uh, but unfortunately, he would turn out to be wrong as during the end of the campaign in February of 1832, uh, Napoleon II would catch a strong case of pneumonia uh, that would leave him bedridden for several months. Uh, and then this would take a massive toll on the young man's health overall. Uh, and eventually he would develop tuberculosis, of which he would die uh, without an heir on July 22nd of 1832. The House of Bourbon Orleans would then in an effort to try to regain favor with the rest of the dynasty, quickly remarry, would remarry Empress Louise to uh, the King of Belgium, King Leopold. Now, without any children of his own, this is the end of the direct line of Napoleon. Now, Napoleon's younger brother, Joseph, Napoleon II's uncle, would take the throne, styling himself Joseph I, Emperor of the French. And this is where we will pick up next time as we look at his reign and the reign of his successors. Thank you for checking out the alternate history class on YouTube. If you enjoyed this week's episode, feel free to like the video. And if you want to see each video when it goes live, subscribe and hit that bell. The alternate history class can be found on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you find podcasts. Big thank you to my patrons. If you'd like to support the show, you become a patron. And if you're in the top two tiers, you'll get a shout out at the end of each episode after you sign up. Thank you for your most important donation, your time, and I'll see you next time as we journey down the path not taken.